Good morning everybody and welcome to this service of reflection and communion. This here is Basil and more about him later. And yes, there's now the good news that the lockdown thaw is beginning and there are signs of normal life in our towns. And hey, guess what? People can go and have a haircut. Isn't that wonderful? A lot of people are wandering around looking like um, trolls in storybooks and fairy tales. And uh, some of us don't have to worry about that too much, but a lot of people have learnt the skills of cutting their spouses and partners' haircuts. So there's some awful things around as well. But we've been given the green light to begin some church services, but have been advised to take it slowly and gradually because of the lingering threat of undoing the progress during lockdown by spreading the infection, by holding too many services too soon at our various locations. So we will be holding a service of communion on Sunday the 26th of July at 10.30 at St Peter and St Paul's Church, Newport Pagnell. Now we reckon we can socially distance 50 people safely in the church. And there's a limit on wedding attendees too of 30. But as for communion, it depends upon the size of the church in question. These are our instructions and guidelines. For example, we're not allowed to kneel at the altar rail yet because of touching things. And we're not allowed to uh, consume the wine at communion, not to pass the wine around those are just two of the things but at least we're beginning again at the end of this month and i know that many will still be social distancing then so we will continue to record the readings and the sermon for the web page and the newport parish facebook page so you can keep in touch spiritually it's more difficult with our technology recording the whole service then for practical reasons but we can do well, we do what we can and we'll keep you updated over the next couple of weeks. And it's great to see so many watching and reflecting upon these videos over the last few months. It's heartening to know that there are more people out there than we previously thought taking an interest in the Christian faith. So, our intercessions this morning were written by Karen Goff, one of our two licensed lay ministers. And there will be just the Gospel reading today, since the other readings are quite meaty and would need another sermon. And you don't want that, do you? So the short services too help us to download things faster and get things out to you quicker. We're learning still about all the technology. So let's pray. And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. And Almighty God, God to, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's open our hearts to God. Most, Most merciful, merciful Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today, which is the fourth Sunday after Trinity, O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, 
we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. Then Jesus began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, Will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my <coughs> yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I saw some children playing hopscotch the other day, and it really threw me back in time. <clears throat> I didn't realise this game was still played. I didn't realise that, you know, people still play games like that and I thought they died out in history. But it's still alive and kicking. And it made me think of going to the park and those games of football where two jumpers were goalposts, one at each end of a field with long grass in. And a whole group of kids, including the girls, pretended that there were teams like Manchester United and Aston Villa, of course. And the games would go on forever. And the score would end up something like 27-23. And during those muddy, sweaty games, there'd be many arguments about whether a goal was a goal or whether the ball had just gone over the jumper posts or just inside them for a goal. We let you have the last goal, so you should let us have this one, was the inevitable outcome of having no referee. And it sounds a bit like Jesus' comment about children when he says, you're like children in the marketplace, calling to their playmates, we piped for you and you didn't dance, etc, etc. Well, even in those football games, if there'd been a referee, we'd have wanted him to think like us and agree like our team. We often want God to react to things the way that we do. We want God to be what we want him to be and to think like us. And children are like this too. It takes time to teach them that their way of viewing things isn't always right or best for them. Adults want God to dance to their tune. And God isn't God unless he agrees with me. But God sees the bigger picture and knows that there are times when our views are actually burdensome to us and can stop us growing in wisdom and, drink, and in enjoying life to the full. And we all have fixed views and attitudes that are difficult to let go of. Not all of our views are wrong, but there can be some things that really get in the way 
of God being able to help us in this life. We need God's help. Life is tough and the yoke we pull is hard work without this help. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Well, we can't escape the aggros and pains of this life. But allowing Jesus to walk alongside us and share that load can turn sorrow into joy. Yoked oxen walked alongside each other when they were ploughing fields and not one behind the other. God wants to walk alongside us and not to dictate to us. He's not a dictator in the sky. But when we're pulling that yoke, we don't want to be burdened with extra baggage or the job becomes even tougher. Imagine trying to do any strenuous task dressed in a spacesuit or a coat of armour. Or imagine trying to enjoy a hot summer when you're permanently wearing a thick winter coat, a noddy hat and Wellington boots. That baggage wouldn't help us to enjoy anything. In fact, we'd probably want the sun to disappear because we'd be so uncomfortable. Now, spiritually, there are things we need to shed. Better to travel light and enjoy more of our walk with the Lord as we manage this life than be carrying a load of unwanted luggage. There's so much that can hinder us from effectively pulling life's plough. Now remember that a plough is supposed to create a furrow from which new life and seedlings can grow. We can, with Jesus' presence, turn our sorrows into something else. So what sort of things do we need to think about shedding? Well, sometimes there are bad ideas which we've picked up along life's way. Even bad ideas about who God is or who God isn't. Sometimes we have to let go of an idea about who we thought God is. And bad religion is so destructive and life-denying. I remember someone saying to me once, I'd love to come and worship in your church, Vicar, but my mother didn't approve of religion and she'd turn in her grave if she knew I was attending church. Wow. Now there's someone who was controlled by someone who'd been dead for 20 years. They needed to shed that influence. I wonder where that person's mum is now. Others find pulling life's yoke hard because they simply don't seek divine help or have convinced themselves that God just doesn't exist. Others have had horrendous experiences of the church or of other so-called Christians or real Christians perhaps who have actually really put them off God, church and worship, put them off for life. I think we've all met people like that. And others simply can't contemplate any change in their world viewpoint. Well, that doesn't mean that God doesn't exist, does it? Just because we've met someone who's horrible, who says they're a Christian. Just because we've had a bad experience doesn't mean God doesn't exist. I mean, you never... Say to yourself, I'm never going to eat again because I once had food poisoning. Yet some people ignore their spirituality just because they met a bad person from church or even a horrible vicar. Then there are those who find the spiritual journey tough because they're completely dominated by their work. But one of the biggest impediments to spiritual progress is our own pride and self-sufficiency. I get along fine, thank you, without needing God or anybody else. 
But scripture says there are times when we have to trust in the Lord and lean not unto our own understanding. And conversely, there are those who are trapped by a spirit of religion and a cycle of guilt from the errors of the past. They don't want help because they think that God disapproves of them and has got it in for them. Or we can get stuck in a habit of how we live life and can't see any, any other way to be. Sometimes the road downwards isn't a, a steep drop like falling off a cliff. It can be a gradual road downwards and you don't even know that you're on that road. We do make it hard sometimes for Jesus to walk with us with our self-made rules, our histories, religious and social viewpoints and our blocked tears and perceptions. Our national, as we've seen, our national and social and economic problems come and go in cycles. And we have all had to endure and make the best we can over the last few months. And that's still going on, isn't it? But one thing that never goes away is God who made us. And the question of whether we turn to him or turn away from him. You see, when we make God in our own image, we will never be truly satisfied and will ultimately reject that false God and be unhappy until we discover who God really is. You know, the one that wants to help us and share the yoke of life with us. Isn't it clever how subtle, how subtly the devil works to keep us from accepting Jesus into our lives? Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. He doesn't want, the devil doesn't want Jesus to liberate us and free us from these things. He doesn't want Jesus to walk with us and accept his love. The devil doesn't need to appear as a red imp with horns and a trident. He's more crafty than that and he uses the tactics just mentioned. When Jesus is with us, we see life and death in a different way. And joy can spring into our hearts where once there was sorrow. We have accepted who and what really matters in this life and the next. Without God, things are pretty bleak and hopeless. And all actually comes to nothing when we pass. Which brings me back to Basil. Here he is. My video star for today. Now Basil's an old boy now. He's 13, which in human years makes him about 90. And he's just yawned at my sermon. Now this little dog was orphaned this spring due to a family death. And he's had to, at his ripe old age, move house, adopt a different lifestyle, mix with two other dogs, as you can hear, prowling around. He had to have all his teeth out before he was orphaned. Basil had to change the habits of a lifetime when he came to live with us. Things like not jumping on the bed at night and being allowed to just sleep all day with no exercise. But Basil has accepted these changes and he seems happy and vibrant and enjoying life. And I like to think he enjoys life more than he ever did before. He's changed the habits of a lifetime, haven't you Basil? With no complaints at all. And I think he's happy, even if he yawns at my sermons. Don't you Basil? We'll let Basil have a wander around. Now, that's what can happen even to a dog, although changes were forced upon him. But with us, we have the choice 
to let God in Jesus walk alongside us. God will never force himself upon us. We make the choice to let go of the old, our baggage, and let Jesus in. Yes, of course, I know it's hard to let go. And when it's hard, offer the baggage to Jesus, who is part of God himself. Make a decision to travel light and let him in. This is what is meant by repentance, to change our attitude, to change our heart, to change our decision making from what was towards where God is. And this God only wants the best for you, more than you could ever dream of. Some ideas about who we thought God is and what he's like need to be shed. Plowing difficult soil in this life really does become easier when we ask Jesus, God himself, to share the load with us. The interesting thing is that those who have turned to Jesus and asked him to come into their lives always report of how liberating this was for them and of how they saw all their difficulties in life in a different way since that point. They speak of experiencing the activity of God in their lives. And these aren't religious freaks, Bible bashers in the wrong way. They were ordinary people. They are ordinary people from all walks of life and races doing ordinary jobs with the normal problems of life that beset you and me. Their lives were changed and they were made extraordinary lives by asking God to walk with them. So I'll finish with the words of Jesus. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Amen. Let's pray for the world. Holy God, we raise our prayers to you in the power of the Spirit, trusting that you will hear our prayers and use them to accomplish your will for the world and for the Church. We pray for all people who seek to follow your way in their lives. Let your church speak your word of truth with confidence and in unity so that those who are searching and listening will be able to see and hear clearly your message of love and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help pre prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the people around us in our neighbourhoods and our places of work. Give us sensitivity and insight into their needs and vulnerabilities so that we may learn truly to love our neighbours as ourselves. With the relaxation of many restrictions, help us to be responsible and sensible in all our interactions with those around us so that we do not increase the chance of infecting or being infected by those we meet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for people we know who are ill, anxious or bereaved, and for those that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. We pray that you will lead them, and us, in peace towards healing and wholeness of mind and spirit. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers and all medical professions who seek to heal and help those affected, and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Jesus <clears throat> Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer ourselves to you in faith and confidence. Show us as we go out into the world how we can best prepare ourselves to be part of your response to our prayers. Fill us with the spirit of life which was in Christ Jesus, your Son and our Saviour. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, Son our Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. God is love and those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the living Lord be always with you. And also with you. And as the grain scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, and now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. And the Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is, is with, with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You, you embraced, embraced us, us as, as your, your children, children and, and welcomed us to sit and, and eat with you. you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He, he opened, opened his, his arms of love upon the cross and, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And, and with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And we prepare our hearts to welcome Jesus into our lives as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed in him in, on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so stay safe and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.